Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is me. It is your old pal, the original gamer, Stevie Stroh. And why am I here? I am here to do another chapter or two in the um, Programming in Basic on the TRS-80 Color Computer Series. It has been a while since I've done one of these. I am way behind. I want to get through this for a variety of reasons. Just want to remind everybody what this thing started off as what the intent is and how to do it. So basically, uh, back in 1981, when I got my first color computer and only had the original version of BASIC, which was known as Color BASIC, which then had a nice wide, thick manual, large print, lots of pictures, very easy to read, very easy to follow. Um, I used this book to teach myself how to program in BASIC, which was the language that was built into the computer. BASIC is one of many computer languages. It stands for Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code. Uh, BASIC was developed, I think, in the early 70s, and it was um, used and ported to a lot of different computers. So Apple had BASIC, Atari had BASIC, TI had BASIC, uh, TRS-80 Model 1 and 3s had BASIC, and the TRS-80 Color Computer had BASIC as well, which was actually developed by Microsoft. So we actually had Microsoft Basic, which is kind of cool. And the first color computers had what was called Color Basic. And then there was an upgrade that was called Extended Color Basic that was uh, an actual chip replacement you had to put in your computer to change out a chip. And Extended Color Basic had more commands for graphics and sound. And you can draw circles, lines, boxes. You can paint. You can fill the screen. You can do all kinds of cool things. In order to use Extended Color Basic, you had to have more memory. So the original color computers that had 4K of RAM, that was the first release in 1980, they could only run Color Basic. In order to run Extended Color Basic, you would have needed to have 16K of RAM and all that kind of stuff. So um, we started this series, or I started this series, because I want to recapture those memories. I want to relearn BASIC and reteach myself. And then I figured there might be one or two other people in the world who are maybe crazy enough to possibly think this is interesting. So I'm going through chapter by chapter. I'm going to read the chapter to you. Um, this thing is set up in kind of a virtual environment where in the introductory video, which is in this playlist, I showed you where to go to get the VCC emulator, the virtual color computer emulator. So you don't need to have a real color computer to get this. I showed you where to go to the color computer archive to get an electronic copy of the book. It's in, the, in an Adobe Acrobat PDF format. And then I also showed you where to go to the Color Computer Archive to get a virtual floppy disk that you can insert into your virtual color computer so we can start saving our projects onto disks. So I did an introductory video that kind of showed us what we needed, how to get this going. And now I'm going through chapter by chapter. So here's a little, that's a little catch up because it's been a while since I've done one of these. Now, what chapter are we going to cover today? We're probably going to catch, cover chapter four and chapter five because they're both pretty short and none of them do anything um, completely spectacular as far as putting anything visual on the screen, but they are important commands and important parts of the internal logic to understand. And then I also wanna conclude this uh, reintroduction by saying the ultimate goal of this series was to not only relearn the basic language, but to then to write a game. Because as a kid, I wrote a lot of different video games in BASIC. Um, you know, a lot of them were just complete original ideas that I thought up. But obviously, some sometimes they're inspired by other things. Some of them were my versions of other popular games, my own homemade clones. And so I wrote a bunch of different games. My first year or two even, I only had color BASIC. So I couldn't do any of the high-resolution graphics. So we'll start off by doing some low-resolution block graphic games with simple sound. And then later on, we'll get into more high resolution games uh, with better graphics and then possibly even get into Color Computer 3 Extended Basic, which has even higher resolution and more color options. Right now, all this stuff is kind of geared towards Color Computer 1 and 2. But uh, we might just, depending on how far we go with this and how interested people are, we might get that going as well. So why don't we jump in? And let's take a look at what we're doing today. So we're going to do chapter four. Chapter four says count the beat. In this chapter, you'll experiment with computer sound effects. Before, you, before doing this, you need to teach the computer to count. So this is what we're going to type in right now. It says type in the box here. 10 for x equals 
1, 2, 10, 20, print quote x space equals end quote x, 30, next x, 40, print quote I have finished counting. And then it says to run the program. But let's look at what we're doing here. Because we're putting line numbers in front of everything, we're writing code, right? So this is line 10. And then we're, what we're learning right now is what's known as the for next loop. So we're basically saying for x equals 1 to 10. So which means the computer is going to start on 1 and then potentially go to 2 and go to 3. And we'll continue to do this up to the number 10. The next line says print x equals. And when you're printing something wrapped inside quotes, that is what's known as a string as a reminder. So that is actual literal text that has no value. But outside of that is the letter x, which is the actual variable that we've started to declare and define up here. And so we're gonna print that x equals whatever the current value of x is, and then here's the next. We start off by saying four, we do something, we say next, this will continue 10 times. So for x equals one to 10, we'll print x equals one, x equals two, x equals three. When it reaches 10, it will be done. And then the last line of our program will say, I have finished counting. So that's what this code is gonna do. Let's go ahead and type a run and see it. x equals one, x equals two, x equals three, x equals four, x equals five, x equals six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I have finished counting. That's what these three, four lines of code right here have told us to do, to count to 10, to print on the screen, to visualize what it's doing, and then to put a little message at the bottom that says, I'm done. So that's actually kind of cool, right? So now it says run this program a few more times, but it says replace line 10 with one of these lines. So it's giving us a few options. So, so one of them says, um, let me zoom in on this real quick. Now it says to replace it with something else. It says like, so for X equals one to 100, for X equals five to 15, for X equals negative two to two, for X equals 20 to 24. So it wants us to replace line 10 um, with one of those things. So that's what we are going to do, but I just wanted to zoom in on that for you real quick there. So let's go back and if we type in list, we will see what our current um, program looks like. So list, right? So right now it says for x equals one to 10. So now it says to try 10 for x equals one to 100, which means it's gonna do this sequentially, um, starting on one all the way to 100. If I run the program, there we go. It's counting, it's counting, it counted to 100. And so now it's done. The next thing it wanted us to do is to try line 10 to say for x, equals 5 to 15. So then we're gonna get our 5, 6, 7, 8, right? So when we run this, there we go. We started at 5, we ended at 15. The next one is kind of interesting. It says 10 for x equals negative 2, 2, 2. And so it's gonna do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2 when we run that. So when we go there, boom, negative 2, because negative numbers are still numbers and you're still counting. And that's something that sometimes as human beings, we have a hard time wrapping our brains around that uh, zero has no value to us monetarily. So we don't consider it a number and we don't consider anything less than zero a number either because it has no monetary value. But computer, all numbers are important. Technically your computer only knows about two numbers, a zero and a one, it's, it's a binary machine. So all numbers are sacred, sacred and precious to your computer. Now, uh, we did that. So line 10 tells it what to do. Line 30 tells it to keep going. And then until the machine reaches the last number. So that is kind of what we started on this page right here. So let's go to the next page. And so here it's kind of telling us that um, if we look at the top half here, make this a little bigger. Okay, look at line 20. Since line 20 is between the four and next, so here it's just showing us our example, right? Okay. Now it says add another line between your four and next. Add a line 15 and put in the word counting and run the program. At, with, each, with each count, your computer runs any lines you choose and inserts between your four and next. So let's go back. So let's add, a, if we list this right now, go ahead and list it. So 10 is gonna do a four uh, we have to type in a line 15, print quote, 
dot 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 space counting space dot 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 quote and if we run this so now we see that it's counting negative two counting negative one counting zero counting one counting two I have finished counting if I went back to line 10 and said 4x equals 1 to 100 and run that we're gonna see this happening a lot more times right it's actually just flying by our screen so by adding in that extra line 15 here we actually told it to start counting from a certain number and we gave it a we gave it a beginning value and an ending value we told it to print the word counting we told it to say then print x equals whatever number we're currently on and then go back to the next one and the next one and repeat as necessary until done and then finally print um, I have finished counting so that's the current thing it's to ask us to do now it says um, uh, do it do do it yourself program write a program that makes the computer print your name 10 times um, so this is going to be a four next loop and we're going to have to go from one to ten and in between that loop we're going to have to print our names what did i just say what did i just mean well let's try this right now so um, i'm going to make the color computer screen a little bit bigger i'm going to hit list we don't need any of this anymore let's just go ahead and do new i mean i could reuse the code but whatever we're going to do new we're going to clear out the memory right now there's nothing here so 10. it's basically saying we want it to print our name 10 times so we're going to do the four next loop so 4x equals 1 to 10. 20 print my name is steve pick it pick it pick it pick it uh 30 next x here's my bonus line print what's my name again all right a little computer humor there for you r r r r so i'm telling the computer to start counting at one and counting at 10 in between each of these um things in the loop i'm gonna have it print my name is steve i'm gonna have it finish this and i'm gonna say hey what's my name so when i run this i have printed my name 10 times my name is steve my name is steve my name is steve what's my name again now i can get even fancier here on line 20 I could say print my name is Steve little X here and then the X what the heck does that mean here when I run it so here it goes my name is Steve times one my name is Steve times two my name is Steve times three my name is Steve times four all the way down to ten what did that mean let me show you the code again so just remember this, everything in quotes is a string and it's gonna be printed literally. In this case here, I'm, I'm using the letter X to represent times, even though the computer technically uses an asterisk. Um, but my name is Steve X is inside quotes. Outside the quotes is going to be the um, variable X because whenever you have a letter that's not in quotes, that's a numeric variable that is defined here. So um, I'm going to say my name is Steve times and then whatever our count is at. So when we're counting on one, it'll print one, it'll print two, it'll print three. If you want me to run that for you again, here you go. My name is Steve times one, times two, times three, times four, times five. So that was our do-it-yourself program. Any questions? Uh, you, sir, there in the back with the funny hat. Yes, how can I help you? All right, so what was that exercise about? Now it says do-it-yourself program number two. Write a program to print the multiplication tables nine times one through nine times ten and it actually says um, hint print nine times x is a perfectly legitimate program line this is where understanding what computer multiplication does um, can mess with your brain a little bit so let's go back to here let me look at my program here uh, we're gonna get rid of this so this is our challenge it's saying we want to print our timetable so let's get fancy 10 print quote we are going to print times whatever right we're gonna print times tables uh, we're going to print times tables let's run that and see if it fits on the screen it doesn't kind of right so 10 print quote times tables for nine how about that when we run that times tables for nine so there's our heading so line 10 says times tables for nine um, line 20 we're gonna say 4x equals 1 to 10 again we are going to be counting from 1 to 10 
30, print 9 times, and then I'm going to put the x in here. I'm going to do semicolons in here to get it close. 9 times x equals, quote, semicolon 9 star x. Whose mind is blown right now? Let me explain to you everything I just did here. So I'm starting off by using the word print in quotes. I'm writing the number nine and the word times. Um, I've ended the quote, I've put in a semicolon, and I've now told it to print the variable x. x is going to start at one, go to two, go to three, go to four, etc. And then I'm printing the word equals again inside quotes, putting a semicolon after that. Semicolons smack things together, right? And they, they waste as little space as possible. Then I'm doing right now a formula where I'm taking the number nine and the computer actually uses an asterisk as its multiplication thing. It doesn't use X to multiply like we do on paper because X is a letter. It uses a symbol, which is an asterisk. And then I'm multiplying the number nine times the value of X. Okay. Next thing I need to do is say next x, then I'm going to say print quote uh, whose mind is blown right now. All right, list it back out. Here's my code 10 print. We're going to here's our little heading print times tables for 9, 20 for x equals 1 to 10, 30 print 9 times x equals 9 times x when they're inside and outside of the quote has significant different meanings between a numeric variable and a string variable. Next X means doing it all 10 times. Follow up with a little question, whose mind is blown right now? So let's run the program. My program did this, times tables for nine. Nine times one equals nine. Nine times two equals 18. Nine times three equals 27. I think you'll see a pattern here. All the way up to nine times 10 equals 90. Final question, whose mind is blown right now? Because my mind is blown. Um, who knew I could think this way and get my computer to do these things for me? But these are the DIY challenges. The book is asking us to apply the concept. What did we learn based on understanding what a for next loop does and understanding where the value of a variable is within that loop? You can do something with that. You can display it on the screen by printing it. You can do all kinds of things like that, right? So what was the next thing the book asked us to do for our do-it-yourself program? So it did, okay, write a program to multiply tables nine times one through nine times 25. Was that it? The first one said nine times one through nine times 10. Then on the bottom half of the book, it said nine times one through nine times 25. We can actually do that um, by just going back at this point here and editing our code. So if I go back and I list out my program, and so um, right now it says for x equals one to 10, I'm gonna go into 20 and say for x equals one to 25, and that is now gonna print it 25 times when I run it. It's going, it did it 25 times, and um, nine times 25 is 225. So that was our bonus challenge, which it said basically do it 25 times, which we did. And here they kind of even said for X equals one to 10, print Thomas next X. That's how you um, print your name 10 times for X equals one to 10, print nine times X equals nine times X. I did it slightly different next. Program four, three for X equals one to 25, print nine times X equals nine times X comma. Oh, they actually had us do it as a comma to, to um, take up a little bit less space. Um, we can try that. We can go back. Um, so what line number was that? Okay, 30. Print quote 9 times quote x equals 9 times x comma. So they wanted us to put a comma after that one so it'll print it in columns. Let's see how that comes out here. Yeah, so by doing it in columns, we actually got it um, to, to not scroll past the screen. So their suggestion was to print this in columns, so nine times one equals nine, nine times two equals 18, so on and so forth, all the way up to nine times 25. So that was just kind of their um, suggestion 
on how to do that with the code by putting a little comma after the end right there. Um, no biggie, no harm, no foul. We got it going. So what is the next thing we're going to do as we continue through this fascinating journey um, in using the computer to count for us? Now it says counting by twos. Now that now make your computer count somewhat differently. Erase your program by typing in new and then type in the original program to using a new line 10. Um, so once again, we will type in the word new, which clears memory. I can do CLS and clear the screen. So now it's saying type in print 10. Let me make this the screen a little bit bigger here. Because you got to see this. It's important. 10 print 10 for X equals 2 to 10 step 2. Step 2 is now introducing the concept of skipping numbers, not necessarily going sequentially. If I say for x equals 1 to 10 and I don't specify a step value, it's going to automatically increment by 1. By stepping 2, I'm now saying skip 2 each time you do this. So for x equals 2 to 10, step 2, uh, line 20 says print quote x equals quote x 30 says next x 40 print quote i have finished counting and run okay so instead of going one two three four five six seven eight nine ten it went two four six eight ten it's counting by twos two four six eight who do we appreciate well there you have it we appreciate the fact that this computer is counting by twos so by introducing the concept of step within a four next loop we can have it skip by whatever that step value is. So that's the first thing it asks us to do. It says the first X is two, the next X is 10, and so on, as you can see there. And as we look a little bit further down the screen, um, it's going to suggest this. Um, to make the computer count by threes, to make the computers count by three, well, I'm getting lost on the screen here. All right, so we did that, right? Um, to make the computers count by three, make the X's, to make all the X's three apart, try out this line for X equals three to 10, step three. And then it's even saying here, try five to 50, step five, and so on. So let's go ahead and try this for X equals three to 10, step three. Let's go back. And so on line 10, I'd say for X, equals 3 to 10 step 3 if I list that back out here's my code for x equals 3 to 10 step 3 print x equals x next x print I have finished counting clear the screen run it okay 3 6 9 that's as high as it got before it reached 10 there was nothing greater than 10 so it ended that's how we told it to count to 10 by threes the next thing it's asking us to do is to try this if it passes up the last x, number 10, because 9 plus 3 is 12. Okay, so it's this basic thing. It's skipping that, right? So uh, try a few more options. For x equals 5 to 50, step 5. For x equals 10 to 1, step negative 1. That's kind of cool. Make it count backwards. For x equals 1 to 20, step 4. So let's try that right now. Let's try those few options right now. Let's do 10 for x equals 5 to 50, step 5. We'll run it. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Right? So there's your counting by fives. Let's get crazy with it. Let's say 10. For x equals 10 to 1, step negative 1. That's telling it to count backwards. We're going to start at 10 and we're going to go backwards. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Blast off, right? So by doing 10 to 1, step negative 1, we've taught our computer to count backwards. And then finally, for grins and giggles, we're going to say for x equals 1 to 20, step 4, which is going to ask it to count by 4. So we should see 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, if my in my head math is correct here. When I run this, well, 1, 5, 8, 13, 17. Okay, never mind, because I started at 1. Okay, that makes more sense, right? So it's adding 4 each time. So I started at 1, I added 4, I got 5, I added 4, I got 9, 13, 17. That makes sense. Had I started at 4, if I said for x equals 4 to 20, step 4, that would have been your 4, 8, 16. 
So there you go. So what's the next thing it's asking us to do on the bottom half of this page here? It says, now that we've taught your computer to count, you can add some sound. Erase your old program and type this. All right, I got to scroll to the next page. Oh my goodness, what are they going to have me do here? See, now I got to put on my headphones because now I got to be able to hear this because this music is going to be, there is no doubt in my mind that this music is going to be absolutely off the chain. But um, just to be safe, I need to check my computer's volume mixer and I'm going to probably bring the volume down on my VCC quite a bit. Okay, so what's the new code it wants us to type? It wants us to type in new, clear our memory. Ah, 10, 4, X equals 1, 2, 255, 20. Print, quote, tone, quote, X, 30, sound, X, comma, 1, 40, next, X. What does all this mean? Well, we're going to start at 1. We're going to count to 255. In between this loop, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to print the word tone and we're going to print what number X is currently on as it's stepping its way through here and counting. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to generate a sound based on the value of X. So X will start off as one will be a low tone as it goes to two to three to four. It'll become higher. We're going to sound it for the duration of one cycle. And then we're going to next it out and just continue this loop. So what we should end up hearing is a bunch of short tones that start off very low and get very high. And so this is a way to now audibly hear what's going on in your computer's memory as it's messing around with variables. So let's check this out. Wow, I couldn't breathe. That was exciting. No, but that's kind of cool, right? So the computer's generating sounds. It's generating tones. And so it's doing a four next loop. It's counting to 255. It's sending those tones. Uh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Now it's giving us a suggestion to make it count backwards. Now it's saying go to line 10 and say for X, equals 255 to one step negative one. This is gonna start high and decrease all the way down to one. As we do this and we run it, we're gonna hear the reverse um, scale. Yeah, I'm sorry, the sound was pulling me down. The gravity of that was making me go lower. Yeah, cool. Way to go, Coco. Way to go with your high definition sound there. Yes, very cool stuff, right? That's the basic sound command. It's fun. You can have some fun with that. A lot of games did things like that when you were landing or you were falling. You heard a, a descending scale of tones that make it sound like you were falling and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, so we did that. We did a four next loop. We started high. We went low. Now here's a programming exercise. It says use the step change line 10 so that your computer will sound tones. Um, at uh, bottom of its range to the top every 10th, top of the range to the bottom every 10th, middle of the range to the top every fifth, and so on. So what the heck is it asking us to do? Well, it actually shows us here on towards the bottom of the screen here. If we say from one to 255 step 10, it's giving us the examples, right? So from so so this first question here says so, so start from the bottom, go to the top, skip by ten. So that's from for x equals one to two fifty five, step ten. Um, from top to bottom, that would be for two fifty five to one, step negative ten. Um, from the middle of its range to the top, that the middle is somewhere around one twenty eight, and then step five. So it's kind of giving us those answers. So I am not going to run that, but it's basically saying um, the, this 
giving you some outside of the box thinking, some practical application to what you're learning there. Pretty cool. So next question here says, but can it sing? Yes, in section two, you will learn how to compose your favorite songs. So what did we learn in chapter four? Blah, blah, blah. What did we learn in chapter four? Let me zoom in on this. What did we learn in chapter four? Well, what we learned was this. We learned um, four and two, step and next. What the heck does all that mean? It means that um, for x equals one to 10, we'll count to 10. If I say step two, it'll count by twos. Next means continue this cycle. It also mentioned it talked about print at. I saw that in the sidebar. I didn't quite catch that. So uh, try to pause the program. Oh, shift at. Oh, I see shift at. Shift at is how you pause the program while it's running. Um, so when something's printing on a screen, it is shift at. Let's go ahead and try that real quick. Uh, that was another um, thing that it introduced us to. So the keyboard character of shift at. So if I'm running this, Now the problem is on a real on a real PC keyboard. I don't know what my at key is. <laughs> so on your Coco, you have an at key that's separate. On a PC keyboard, the at is already shifted. So I'm not sure what the at key is. But what the at key is supposed to do on a real Coco is if, if things were printing on the screen and they just kept scrolling for a long time, you could hold down shift, press the at key, and it would pause that. I don't know what the at key is on the emulator. I'll figure that out. But um, that is um, basically what this chapter is all about. And because I've been rambling so long, even though it was a short chapter, I still think this is a long video. So I'll probably just keep this as it is. And then we'll, we'll do chapter five in a separate video. So I hope you enjoyed that. Chapter four on getting started with Color Basic was all about the four next loops. How to get your computer to start at one number end at another number and how to get it to increment either by ones by negatives or by stepping by certain amounts like two four or five whatever so um, it's basically having a computer take a variable that it started with and then change that variable a number of different ways so there's a lot of things you can do with variables one way as we learned early in the book is just to define that variable by saying x equals 20 and you told it what it was and it won't change unless you tell it it's something else. Uh, another thing you can do though with a for next loop is you can say variable x starts off at 20, but it's gonna go to 100. And not only is it gonna do that, but it's gonna increment um, by twos each time it does it for an example. And so we can write software to tell variables in memory to start in one place and become something else. And as they're on this journey, we can have it show us what they are on the screen or make sounds or whatever the case may be. So taking these numbers, these variables, and taking this information and then displaying them visually or, or generating sounds to do something with them audibly are some of the ways that we get our computer to do something that we as humans can understand. Because who the heck cares what a number is in a computer's brain? Nobody cares. But the minute you make that number look like a pretty picture or you make that number move something on a screen or you make that number make some sound, then it's of interest to us, the humans, who require entertainment and amusement. So there you have it, folks. This was chapter four in getting started with Color Basic for the Color Computer. I have been the original gamer, Stevie Stroh. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. Please throw out a comment telling me what you thought about this video. If you are new to the channel, please mash that subscribe button. And if you think anybody else in the world um, besides this guy might think this crazy video is somewhat interesting or informative, then share this video and share my channel with your friends or with that person. And if it's somebody you don't like and you just want to bore them to death, then share it with them that way. And that way you can get your revenge, right? So I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you all next time. Looking forward to your comments. Looking forward to seeing what people are thinking about this series. And remember, we're eventually going to take all these commands and this language and this vocabulary that we're building, and we're going to build a game. And it's going to be kind of crowdsourced. So I'm going to be looking forward to suggestions from the audience on what kind of game we should make. I've got ideas in mind already. I'll be doing little mini demos as we learn more commands. As we get into commands that get more into visual elements like graphics and sounds, I'll be doing not only the things in the book, but also some of my own 
random examples and demonstrations. And then ultimately this should lead up to some type of game that we can design and build and then play. So there you have it. I'll talk to you later now. Peace out and bye-bye everybody. Long live the Coco. Coco forever.